from Kern Government Television. Welcome to this week's Kern County Board of Supervisors meeting. Originating from the County Administrative Center, located at 1115 Truxton Avenue in Bakersfield, California. Grounded in ideas, energy, and innovation, Kern County's vision is to be a driving force for the world's fifth largest economy. And our mission is to exceed expectations of the communities we serve, changing the way they feel about government, those who manage it, and the services it provides. Today's Kern County Board of Supervisors meeting will convene momentarily. Good evening, everyone. We hope you've been enjoying your dinner. We'd like to begin the rest of this evening's program. If you could please make your way to your seats. A large reason we're able to celebrate tonight is courtesy of the Kern Economic Development Corporation's outstanding sponsors. These industry leaders believe in our community and contribute heavily to the success of not only this event, but our region year round. I'd like to take a moment to thank each of them for their commitment to Kern County. Thank you to our presenting sponsor, Rio Tinto U.S. Borax. Platinum sponsor, the AES Corporation. Audio and visual sponsor, Media Solutions Incorporated. Wine sponsor, VipDev MD. Gold sponsors, Adventist Health. Chevron, Dignity Health, Mercy and Memorial Hospitals, Grimway Farms, Hydro Store, Kern Family Healthcare, Metropolitan Recycling, and the Metro Bakersfield Refuse Haulers, Mojave Air and Spaceport at Rutan Field, Provident Strategic Consulting, and Valley Strong Credit Union. Thank you to our balloon sponsor, Taft College and the Taft College Foundation. Our floral sponsor, Era Energy. Entertainment sponsor, Strato Launch. And probably the most important, our specialty cocktail sponsor, Total Western. Thank you to our silver sponsors, the Bakersfield Association of Realtors, Bank of America, Berry Corporation, California Resources Corporation, WM, and Wonderful Orchards. Finally, thank you to our bronze sponsors, Anacapa Engineering and Design Incorporated, Cal Portland, Clinica Sierra Vista, Community Action Partnership of Kern, <laughs> Cornerstone Engineering, Holiday Rock, Kern County Superintendent of Schools, and National Cement Company of California Incorporated. Let's give one more big round of applause for all of tonight's generous sponsors. Now, our special partner tonight is what I wanna to talk to you more about. To share more about of the achievements of Kern County's economy, I'd like to introduce our chair of the Kern Economic Development Corporation and Vice President of External Affairs and Corporate Responsibility at Grimway Farms, Dana Brennan. On behalf of our entire county, I would like to thank Dana, along with Kern EDC's President and CEO, Richard Chapman, for their organization's continued work, support, and partnership in moving Kern County forward. We are so appreciative of everything your organization has done to make tonight's State of the County possible. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Dana to the stage. Thank you, Allie. Um, wow, let's take this down. Good evening. Um, it is a pleasure to be here on behalf of the Kern Economic Development Corporation Board of Directors and the staff. It is my honor to again welcome you to tonight's event. On the screen tonight, hopefully any second, is a document many of you seen have seen before. It's a celebration of Kern County as the largest economy in the San Joaquin Valley, the energy capital of California, number three in ag production nationwide, number three in economic diversity nationwide. You can clap, absolutely. 
and the home of over 50 world tech firsts at Naval Air Weapon Station China Lake. Yeah. But in 1988, Kern County's public and private sector leaders forged a strategic coalition to attract and retain high-value jobs for the region. And that coalition was Kern Economic Development Corporation. And in 2023, we proudly celebrated our 35th anniversary. So today, over 160 members actively support EDC's mission to cultivate and promote Kern County's boundless opportunities for business with the values of integrity, collaboration, stewardship, and service. And over the last three years, we are happy to report that the Kern EDC has partnered on over 17 successful projects, representing approximately 5,000 full-time jobs, 2,700 construction jobs, and $4 billion of investment in our local economy. In 2022, Kern EDC also launched the Manufacturing Alliance of Kern, fondly nicknamed MAC. MAC is an industry-led initiative that advocates on behalf of the region's 400-plus manufacturers. MAC serves a critical role by providing manufacturers the opportunity to engage in business-to-business business, business business conversations and share industry experiences. Thanks in large part to Melinda Brown's leadership, we are proud to report that over 50 companies have participated in the various MAC forums. Yeah, we're happy about that. But that collaboration does not stop in Metro Bakersfield for Kern EDC. Many of you know that the EDC founded the East Kern Economic Alliance in 2009 in an effort to provide an opportunity for East Kern's community and business leaders to convene, to highlight and showcase that region's incredible economic vitality and diversity. We are proud that the Alliance recently celebrated its 15th anniversary and is still going strong. And just a few months ago, most of you in this room were probably there, Kern EDC hosted our 2023 Kern Energy Summit. Largely seen as one of the premier forums for energy and innovation and development for the West Coast, we're happy to share that our 2023 event set a record as the highest attended summit to date. But how do we accomplish these achievements? It is undoubtedly thanks to the incredible team who works tirelessly behind the scenes at the EDC. I would ask Richard and his entire team to please stand and please join me in thanking each of them for their hard work. Thank you, Richard and team. As I wrap up, I'm going to facilitate our very favorite thing as an audience, and that's audience participation exercise. If you currently serve or have served as a board member for the EDC, please stand and remain standing. We were all together this morning, so we know who you are. Stay standing. If you were invited by or sitting with one of these board members or their companies tonight as a sponsor, please stand along with them. I know, you're welcome. So I would ask that we look around this room. This is the power of your local EDC. We are collaborators, we are innovators, and we are tireless champions of EDC's mission to cultivate and promote Kern County's boundless opportunities for business. If you are here tonight and you are not a member of the EDC, consider this an altar call of sorts. We would welcome you to join us and this effort. Thank you everyone for standing. On behalf of the EDC board and staff, again, we thank you for attending this evening and we hope you enjoy the rest of tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dana. Now I would like to introduce you to our platinum sponsor for tonight's State of the County, the AES Corporation. We are thrilled to be joined by their Vice President of Development, Dorothy Sosnowski, who oversees AES's development of clean energy projects across the Western region. Please join me in welcoming Dorothy to the stage to share how the AES Corporation is leading in their field. All right, good evening. 
My name is Dorothy Sosnowski, Vice President Development for the AES Corporation. I'm delighted to be with, here with you this evening along with our AES team. AES is proud to be the platinum sponsor for tonight's State of the County event, and we are proud to play a role in making Kern County the energy capital of California. If you're not familiar with AES, we are a US-based global energy company, and our purpose is to accelerate the future of energy. AES is also one of the leading clean energy developers in the US. Our clean energy portfolio in the United States consists of more than 450 operating projects in 24 states, representing over five gigawatts of solar, wind, and energy storage capacity and we have another 51 gigawatts of projects in our development pipeline in the US. We're also part of the California Consortium that's developing a clean hydrogen hub with support from the Department of Energy. Since 1989, AES has been helping power California with reliable electricity and supporting the state's grid reliability needs. In California, we currently operate more than one and a half gigawatts of solar, wind, and battery storage facilities with another two gigawatts currently under construction. We also operate close to three gigawatts of natural gas assets in the state. Kern County is a great home to many of our clean energy facilities and we are very proud to continue to invest in and partner with this county. Construction was recently completed on our Raceway Solar Plus Storage Project in Rosamond. Our Belfield Solar Plus Storage Project is currently under construction in Mojave and California City. It's scheduled for completion in 2026, and this two gigawatt project is the largest solar plus storage project under construction in the country today. It will... <laughs> it will provide enough clean energy to power almost a half million homes. Belfield also will deliver stored clean energy during periods of high demand to keep California's grid stable, while creating hundreds of good paying jobs and other benefits to the community. AES is committed to responsible clean energy development that creates long-term value and positive economic and environmental impacts for local communities. We appreciate our growing partnership with Kern County, its businesses, its residents, including many of you in this room. Together, we're accelerating the future of energy in Kern County, and we'd like to share a short video with you that highlights some of our projects that I mentioned and community impact work in the county. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dorothy. Now I would like to bring to the stage our 2024 State of the County presenting sponsor, Rio Tinto US Borax. Whether in person or virtually, Rio Tinto has continued to believe in Kern County by serving as our State of the County presenting sponsor for many, many years. We couldn't be more appreciative of Rio Tinto's generosity and heartfelt commitment to Kern County. Tonight, we are joined by Rio Tinto's Chief Operating Officer, Ryan Harnden, who will share about his extraordinary mining and metals company, making a global impact from right here in Kern County. 
as Rio Tinto operates the largest open pit mine and borax mine in the world. Please join me in welcoming Ryan to the stage to share how Rio Tinto is finding better ways to provide the materials our world needs. Thank you, Ellie, for the warm introduction. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 2024 State of the County. What an amazing night so far, and thank you very much for everyone who provided that amazing meal. I am Ryan Harnden. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Rio Tinto US Borax, and it's a privilege to be here tonight as the presenting sponsor. Our business has a long history of mining and producing materials that are essential for modern life and critical for the future. We're proud to produce many American mine products that are used in hundreds of ways, from ceramics and glass, to everyday cleaning items, to fertiliser supplements, and now onto some exciting stuff, like high-tech applications in electric vehicles, solar panels, semiconductors, bulletproof vests, and helicopter armour. 2023 was a great year for us, successfully delivering over a million tonnes of product, as well as becoming the first open pit in the world to transition all of the heavy equipment to renewable diesel. That change reduced... Thank you. That change re reduced 45,000 tonnes of CO2. While we, we work hard to continuously improve, our global markets also continually fluctuate. In the second half of 2023, we started to feel the impacts of the market change, which has become pretty challenging for our business, but our team worked together to respond with resiliency that was nothing short of impressive. Our team was focused on safety first while producing quality products in the most stable way. Our motto as we move into 2024 is safe, stable and efficient. We're truly blessed to work in such a supportive county. Thank you to the Kern County Board of Supervisors for their strong leadership and support. Thank you to the Kern EDC for their hard work on tonight's event. And thank you to all the government officials, business leaders and, stakeholders and community stakeholders all of whom contribute to making Kern County a great place to do business. As you'll see on the video that's about to come up, we have an amazing uh, site and asset, and we welcome all of you on the 11th of April this year, as we open our gates to the public to actually come see what an amazing place it is. If you are interested to come and visit our, our site, please see Mary Beth or, or talk to the EDC. And, uh, and we can organise for you to come and see our facility. I appreciate your time tonight and your attention. Thank you very much. Please take a few moments to enjoy this video. The beautiful Mojave Desert is home to the largest open pit mine in California, Rio Tinto US Borax. Dedicated to excellence at our operations, we've been operational for 152 years. From the early days in Death Valley to the discovery of boron and development of mine operations in Kern County, U.S. Borax has been a trusted community partner, a vital East Kern employer, and a global business operator for decades. We supply one-third of the world's demand for refined borates found in hundreds of products, including your mobile cell phone, laptop computer, and flat-screen TV. Without borates, the screens would be too hot to touch. Borates are found in plant fertilizers, laundry additives, and fire suppressants. The insulation in your home, the two by fours in your walls, wind turbine blades, and solar panels also contain borates. We're proud to lead the world in the development of refined borates and strive to find better ways to provide the materials the world needs. It's that mindset that prompted us to explore low-carbon opportunities in the cement industry using decades-old mine waste, investigate renewable energy options for a 24-hour-a-day, seven-days-a-week operation, 
and transition our entire on-site machinery fleet to renewable diesel. Last year, we were the first open pit mining operation in the world to achieve this fuel conversion goal. This transition will reduce carbon dioxide emissions by up to 45,000 tons per year, or roughly the equivalent of 9,600 cars. And other Rio Tinto mine sites are following suit. But at the heart of what we do lies the core values of care, courage, and curiosity. We act with care by prioritizing the safety of employees, contractors, and guests. We proceed with courage by supporting everyone to speak up when they see something that doesn't seem right. We progress with curiosity by asking questions, looking for answers, and including diverse ideas. We're proud to offer good paying jobs, supporting hundreds of Kern County families, often for multiple generations. We continue to seek out the best talent to engineer, build, develop, maintain, operate, and manage one of the longest operating businesses in California. We're honored to play our part. Rio Tinto U.S. Borax, essential for life, critical for the future. Thank you so much, Ryan. Before we hear from Chairman Couch in just a moment, I'd like to introduce some very special guests. To be honest, this was the hardest part of planning our program because truly everyone in this room is worthy of a formal introduction and we really would like to be able to introduce you all. But due to limited time, we'll do our best to keep things short. If I do call your name, please briefly stand so we can be sure to thank you for your service to our residents. Let's start with our Kern County family. First and foremost, our Board of Supervisors and Chief Administrative Officer. You'll be hearing more about them in just a few moments from Chairman Couch. I said stand, you guys. People want to see you. <laughs> I'd also like to introduce our Sheriff, Donnie Youngblood, District Attorney, Cynthia Zimmer, Auditor Controller, County Clerk, Amy Espinoza, and Treasurer Tax Collector Jordan Kaufman. Thank you so much. I would also like to recognize all of our Kern County Department heads for their outstanding work. Okay, please join me in recognizing the following. California State Senator Shannon Grove, Assemblywoman Dr. Jasmine Thames, Assemblyman Vince Fong, from the city of Bakersfield, please welcome Mayor Karen Goh, Vice Mayor Andre Gonzalez, and Council Members Eric Arias, Manpreet Kaur, Ken Weir, and City Manager Christian Clegg. From the city of Delano, Mayor Joe Allendejo, Vice Mayor Salvador Solorio Ruiz, and Council Members Liz Morris and Veronica Vasquez. From the city of McFarland, Mayor Saul Ayon. From the city of Shafter, Mayor Chad Givens, Mayor Pro Tem Kathy Prout, Council Members Gilbert Alvarado, Pete Espinoza, and Gustavo Olvera Jr., as well as City Manager Gabriel Gonzalez. From the city of Taft, Mayor Dave Knorr, Mayor Pro Tem Oracle Creer, Council Members Josh Bryant, Carlos Shavira, and Ron Worldrop, as well as City Manager Craig Jones, from the City of Ridgecrest, Mayor Eric Bruin, Vice Mayor Kyle Blades, and City Manager Ron Strand. From the City of Wasco, Mayor Alex Garcia, and City Manager Scott Hurlbert. Kern County Superintendent of Schools, John Mendeburu. I would also like all elected kindergarten through 12th grade and community college district board members, as well as all special district board members and their representatives to please stand. Would all of our municipal and superior court judges please stand. And finally, this is Kern County where we honor veterans. If you served our country in the military, please stand. for your service and thank you to all of you for your commitment to Kern County. 
Now, I would like to invite two of Kern County's special elected officials to the stage. Assemblywoman Dr. Jasmine Baines, representing the 35th California Assembly District, and Assemblymember Vince Fong, representing the 32nd California Assembly District. Sorry, we were busy chatting. So I am Vince Fong. It is one of my highest honors, if not the highest honor, to represent the communities of Bakersfield, Bear Valley Springs, Fraser Park, Glenville, Kernville, Lake Isabella, Maricopa, Oildale, Ridgecrest, Taft, and Tatchby as your 32nd District Assemblyman. And I look forward to continuing to fight for Kern County in Sacramento and beyond. And I'm Dr. Jasmine Baines, and it is my honor to serve as the assembly member from the 35th district representing the cities of Bakersfield, Delano, Wasco, Arvin, Shafter, McFarland, Lost Hills. And I first served our community as a family doctor, and now I have the extreme honor to represent us in the state legislature. You don't see Democrats and Republicans working together nowadays anymore, but tonight, Everyone has come together to reflect on the perseverance and tenacity of the men and women that call Kern County home. We're, we're thrilled to be here tonight for our 26th annual State of the County. This evening's event, uh, you can apply for that. <laughs> this evening's event marks an impressive milestone of success in our region. For generations, Kern County has been an innovator in energy, agriculture, and aerospace, and we're proud to live in a community that feeds, fuels, and defends the world. And none of this would be possible if it wasn't for the hardworking students, teachers, farmers, law enforcement officers, military personnel, oil workers, ranchers, and other talented people whose tenacity grid and determination has positioned Kern County as the backbone of California. And now I'm gonna take this opportunity to make a special announcement. For years, the Valley has been marked as an epicenter of medically underserved communities. The University of California identified the Valley as the fastest growing, most impoverished, and least healthy region of the state. The UC also found that the Valley has the worst shortage of doctors and nurses in the state. It is not a coincidence that the Valley is at the top of both lists. People in the Valley lack access to basic preventative care. As a doctor, I constantly see patients in the advanced stages of diseases that could have been prevented if only they had gotten access to care sooner. When I decided I wanted to become a doctor, I knew I wanted to care for the community that raised me but I had no choice but to leave Kern to go to medical school. When I graduated, I knew I wanted to come back to complete my residency, but that almost was not possible either. Residencies would have taken me hundreds of thousands of miles away from home were it not for someone who advocated for me and knew that if we want to address our healthcare workforce shortage, we have to commit to growing our own. If it was not for that person's encouragement and support, I might not have ever become a doctor, let alone be standing today as your assemblywoman. That person was Supervisor David Couch. <laughs> David, David has worked selflessly to make Kern County a better place to live. And my life is just one of the many lives that he has touched and changed. I spent last year learning about our state legislature work, how the state legislature works, and more importantly, I learned what our state leg legislature thinks of us. Time after time, I saw Sacramento weaponize the Valley's health disparities against us. Our poor health outcomes have become blunt instruments that outside groups use to attack our economy and our way of life. 
shutting down energy production, forcing farmers to fallow their land, shipping dairies out of state, banning trucks and tractors, and refusing to invest in new water storage. This is Sacramento's prescription for the valley, but their medicine is worse than the disease. What we need are more opportunities for our young people to dream big. I was forced to leave the valley when I went to medical school, but I am one of the few doctors that came back. Most do not. Once they leave smaller rural communities, most medical students never return. The valley is the best in the world at growing fruits and vegetables, but we need to learn how to grow our doctors here. In that... <laughs> In that spirit of growing your own and addressing the severe lack of access to healthcare in Kern, I am excited to announce some breaking news. Next month, I will introduce legislation to bring a University of California Medical School to Kern County. We have to start training medical students who were born and raised here and who have the roots that will encourage them to practice medicine close to home. This project will also create good paying middle class jobs and help diversify our economy so that there are opportunities to succeed for people of all backgrounds. I could not be prouder to use this night to announce this effort. We must commit to growing our own. And with all of you here tonight, with the person who helped me become a physician from the very beginning. Thank you, Supervisor Couch. And now it is my honor to introduce Supervisor David Couch. That's gonna be a hard act to follow, I don't know. <clears throat> wow. Amazing news. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Vince. Obviously, thank you, Jasmine, for that kind introduction. Those guys are making a difference, and they're making an extraordinary impact on Kern County. I'm going to go off script immediately, okay? <laughs> <clears throat> Let me describe for you something that happened late this afternoon as I was getting ready to come to the state of the county. You want things to go well when you're coming to an event like this, when you're going to give the presentation. And uh, I never carry any cash, right? You all, the people at this table know that. Um, but I happen to have what I would consider a fairly large amount for just carrying around. And I completely lost it. So I'm distracted. I want you to keep that in mind tonight as I'm going through this. But I, I realized <clears throat> if we just, if all of you would just reach in a buck a piece would pretty much clear all of this up for me. <laughs> and it's not that much for each of you. All right, back on script. It's my pleasure to welcome you to tonight's 26th annual State of the County. I'm David Couch, obviously, and I'm honored to be here before you tonight, not only as your fourth district supervisor, but also as this year's chairman of the board. Thank you. I have had the great privilege of serving the communities of Arvin, Bakersfield, Delano, Lamont, Lost Hills, McFarland, McKittrick, Shafter, and Wasco, some of them since all the way back in 2013. And Derby Acres, that's right. <laughs> Allie, we forgot Derby Acres. It's my honor to continue to help lead Kern County forward as your chairman for the third time in my tenure in office. A little more about that towards the end. As we gather tonight to celebrate a bright future for our county, allow me to make a few introductions. Tonight, I am, of course, joined by my four colleagues on the Board of Supervisors, and this is in no particular order of importance. I'm just going to start with the first and work my way down. First District Supervisor Philip Peters. Second District Supervisor Zach Scrivener. Third District Supervisor Jeff Flores. And last but certainly not least, she's Fifth District Supervisor Leticia Perez. I 
I really look forward, guys, to working with you to continue our work as we further the investments to strengthen our county's future. I'm also pleased to be joined tonight by our county's new Chief Administrative Officer, James Zervis. Where is Jim? You're not new anymore, Jim. That's the last time we're going to call you new. But we appreciate the job you do, what you do for the board, what you do for our residents, what you do for the county family. We really, really, really appreciate you, Jim. Thank you for what you do. I also want to introduce you to my staff. I think they're at table 32. Isabel Zamora. Maria Espinoza. Art Armanderas. Zachary Wakefield. I don't think I mentioned Jesus Perez. Jesus, are you back there? Thank you. Five terrific and very talented people I am very proud to surround myself with. Thank you guys for what you do for me, and thank you really for what you do for the people of the 4th District every day. Let's also thank tonight's movie stars. Gustavo Aguirre. Where's Gustavo? <laughs> Deputy Neil Davidson. Is he here? And also Jim Damien for generously donating their time to our opening video. Your messages of ingenuity, resilience, and grit is what Kern County is really all about. Finally, I want to introduce you to some people that are the most important people in my life. I'm going to start with my son, Connor. Why don't you guys stand up? I want people to see you guys. I'm very proud of you guys. And I've not, we haven't done this. Thank you. My daughter, Kelly. Her husband, Bryce. Bryce, by the way, is a Bakersfield City firefighter. Their four children, Sophia, Olivia, Jack, and Samuel, right down here in front. Those are four of my seven grandkids. I also want to recognize my other daughter, Kristen, and her husband, Jason, um, and their children, Abigail, Caleb, and Ethan. They live in Idaho, so they are not here this evening to be with us. Finally, my beautiful partner in life, Lori. She keeps me humble. Thank you, sweetheart, for all your support. I appreciate you very much. I love you. As many of you know, Kern County is the third largest county by size in California. We span more than 8,000 square miles of desert, mountains, and valleys, diligently working, as you heard Jasmine say, to feed, fuel, and defend the world. As you look around tonight, you're going to notice details that thoughtfully share that story, from the food we grow to the talented people who make our community feel like home. If you were at last year's State of the County Address, you'll remember Supervisor Flores focused on the uh, broader story of our region, sort of a bird's eye view of how we are leading the world through our legacy industries. Kern County is still one of the top ag-producing regions in the nation with an $8 billion impact. Let's pause right there for a second and thank everybody from the farmer down to the farm laborer for what they do to put food on our tables. We are home to a robust aerospace and defense industry that is at the forefront of international recognition for space tourism, the first ever privately funded space flight, and defense and advanced weapons development supported by two military installations, Edwards Air Force Base and Naval Air Weapons Station China Lake. And tonight, we are joined by Executive Director for Naval Welfare Center Weapons Division China Lake, Dan Carreno. Dan, are you here? Thank you for being with us, coming all that way, and for your service to our country. We also produce 80% of California's oil and gas under the strictest, most environmentally conscious regulations in the entire world. 80%. And more than half of the state's alternative energy. You know, Sacramento runs around the country saying how much alternative energy and how much wind and solar they produce. Well, 60% of the state's alternative production is right here in Kern County. We're proud to say our community is not only the energy capital of California, but really, really we are a driving force 
in the world's fifth largest economy. Fifth largest. Let's drill, no pun intended, a little deeper on uh, what it means to provide resources to those outside of Kern County, but what we're also doing to bolster life within. Many of us have called Kern County home for decades. And what we can all attest is that we are a tight-knit community of innovators. Sometimes we're the underdogs, but we're always the people that just don't quit. Our region is filled with passionate and talented leaders whose sheer determination has positioned us to be the backbone of California. Our ability to withstand state regulations, Sigma, ring a bell with anyone, mandated energy transitions, and so much more is thanks to the innovation of all of you sitting in this room tonight. Here in Kern County, we know better than anyone how to dig in despite challenges and build something that is truly great. Because of this, it's important now more than ever that the Board of Supervisors invests in creating the highest quality of life for our communities. Not because it's just some novel idea, because it's what our, one, what our one, nearly one million residents deserve. The old saying goes, you can't help others until you help yourself. Please listen closely how, through historic investments, the board is helping Kern County become the best place to live and work in California. That's our goal. Let's start with public safety. Sure, you can applaud that. Why, why not try to be number one? Thanks to Measure K, our one cent locally dedicated and controlled sales tax, we have been able to drastically increase our support for the vital services of our Kern County Public Safety Agencies. Last year, the board laid the groundwork by approving significant pay increases, hiring bonuses, and other incentives to fill chronically vacant positions within the Kern County Sheriff's Office. We're proud to say that our investments are working, and this year you are going to see a difference firsthand. Not only do we have a record number of new deputy sheriff's recruits in our academies, but we have successfully hired over a dozen sheriff's deputies from other law enforcement agencies outside of Kern County, such as Deputy Neil Davidson that you heard from in the video. Those are called lateral transfers, and we hope to see a lot more of those. This year we are, sure. This year we're building on this momentum and have approved an additional 25 new detention deputy positions in our 2024 budget to help the sheriff deploy more deputies from our jails to our frontline law enforcement positions throughout the unincorporated communities of Kern County. Tonight, let us pause just for a second. Let us, that's a big deal. Let's celebrate that, let's celebrate that accomplishment. We are confident in the continued support Measure K will provide in our 24-25 budget as well, and that's gonna fund additional deputy and detention deputy positions, and increased bed space in our local jails. Now, in line with keeping our goals of, uh, our goals of keeping our community as safe as possible, we also have pretty good news to share about our Kern County Fire Department. Where are they tonight? Don't just raise your hand because I can't see you. <laughs> Say something. Measure K has helped the board fund a new contract with the fire union to implement sorely needed pay increases for our hardworking firefighters. This investment has improved the recruitment and retention within this vital uh, county department and enhanced training for our search and rescue operations. Where is David Nelson? Where are you, Dave? <laughs> Dave, I want to say, Dave is the president of the fire union, and I just appreciate your professionalism and the way you've uh, treated the board and the way we've been able to negotiate with you. It's a, it's a pleasure to do business with uh, you and your agency. Thank you guys for what you did, the way you've been with us and for what you guys do every single day. As an example, this year residents will see benefits of two new Kern County fire initiatives the fire paramedic safety squads, and the non-firefighter medical units. These two additions will better meet the needs of our unincorporated communities by delivering a higher level of advanced life-saving medical service and preserving our firefighter equipment and crews for the appropriate emergency response. Yep. 
I don't like to speak on behalf of the entire Board of Supervisors very often, but I think I can say that we are all thrilled that 2024 will be the year of increased efficiency in our life-saving responses and the visibility of our law enforcement personnel on the streets. I also want to mention bolstering the tools our public safety staff use daily is a critical piece of this puzzle, and we've invested heavily, and I mean heavily, in the needed upgrades of our infrastructure and equipment to better prepare for our future. Right now, we are building a new 100,000 plus square foot sheriff's office facility for the needed replacement of our coroner building, property room, public transportation, or excuse me, public administration facility, and other vital operations that serve the entirety of Kern County. Go ahead. <laughs> Additionally, we're designing a new sheriff's office substation for Rosamond, negotiating for the acquisition of a new sheriff's office substation in Taft. Where's Taft? It's about time, right? Yeah. And we're in the process of building a new fire station in Hart Flat. We've also purchased two new state-of-the-art helicopters for the Sheriff's Office, which are being used right now to improve our quality, excuse me, our ability to stop crime, combat illegal cannabis grows, and successfully conduct search and rescue operations. The fire department will be also be receiving a new helicopter this year, which will strengthen their ability to protect Kern County mountain communities, combat wildfires, and also aid in their search and rescue operations. You know when you see a fire truck going, I'm going off, I'm going off the script again. I'm driving this guy nuts over here. <clears throat> when you see the fire trucks rolling down the street, you know how much those things cost, the new ones? $1.2 million is what we've been spending to get these fire engines into the firehouses. And we purchased 26 new fire engines to replace old equipment in numerous fire stations across Kern County. My staff and I have had a, a fun time in the last couple of months. We've gotten to deliver, go with the, the sheriff's, uh, or excuse me, with the uh, Kern County Fire Chief and his command staff, and uh, deliver these fire stations to three cities uh, in the 4th District just in the last couple of months. One of the most important upgrades to our public safety infrastructure also is a critical replacement of our countywide emergency telecommunications network to aid and protect all first responders. This five year, hang on to your hats, $157 million project will undergo construction starting this year. And this is the impressive part. We are so proud that the county is not incurring one penny of additional debt to do that. This project's completion will provide connectivity and communications to first responders from city, county, state, and federal agencies, both in normal and in emergency scenarios, benefiting all Kern County residents, especially those in remote and mountain communities. Yep, it's a big deal. That was a hard job, wasn't it, Jeff? <laughs> That's Jeff Hill. He worked on that project for a long time, him and his department. Let's give them a hand because that was a big deal. <laughs> Ensuring our public safety agencies are fully equipped to support our residents is a key component in making our region the best place to live and work in California. And when our community is safe, residents can feel, they can freely enjoy the high quality amenities of our public spaces. We're proud to share that this year, the board has allocated nearly $50 million in historic funding to refurbish almost all of our Kern County parks. This is made possible due to our county staff aggressively seeking grant opportunities, utilizing federal pandemic relief funding and other county resources. Please pause here for a moment. Join me in acknowledging the heartfelt commitment of our employees in this process who spent years meeting with residents, especially in disadvantaged communities, to create and execute a shared vision of how to improve their own neighborhoods. Thank you, guys. There are two projects that I am particularly looking forward to this year. They are the development of what we're calling pocket parks in La Colonia and Fuller Acres. Now, I am willing to bet that 
Some of you may have never heard of La Colonia or Fuller Acres, and you've certainly never heard of them mentioned in the State of the County Address. But these two very special neighborhoods really represent all of the small communities across Kern County that we hear, heard loud and clear when they said, don't you forget about me. See how it ties in with the song? <laughs> so I did that. These two communities will see construction beginning this year, beginning this summer, I believe, on uh, brand new spaces for all of their residents to enjoy. In La Colonia and Fuller Acres, we're building parks with amenities like walking paths, exercise equipment, drought tolerant landscaping, comfortable benches, and state of the art basketball courts and picnic shelters and other park equipment. That's a big deal for those communities. And additionally, you know, when you build something, you have to maintain it. That's where the real, the real cost comes in. These improvements uh, will be maintained, uh, kept safe and clean. The board significantly increased our budget for both regular maintenance and, this is a big one, park rangers across Kern County. Now, Delano, I haven't forgotten about you. I know that we need help out there at Lake Willems, and that's one of my goals this year, is to see that we can get some park rangers out to Lake Willems. I don't think Jim knew I was going to say that, so now we have to do it, Jim. <clears throat> it's not just our parks that are getting much needed to upgrades, but also our public libraries. We're pleased to announce Kern County applied for and received grant funding to conduct facility improvements at 14 different Kern County library locations. We're finalizing, sure. We're finalizing the designs of each project and plan to start construction this spring. This investment is pretty timely because thanks to Measure K, we've been able to reopen all of our unincorporated county library branches to five days a week, including Saturdays, and even expand operating hours. I also, yes. I also want to thank the City of Bakersfield for their partnership in this effort. They approved a five-year, $2.78 million contract to expand hours, days, and services at four of our Kern County branches right here in Bakersfield. Thank you guys very much. For many of our rural communities, the Kern County Library is the only public building available for residents to gather, share, learn, and enjoy community programming. We can't stress enough how meaningful those services are to our nearly 1 million residents. Another critical investment we're making is in strengthening Kern County's economic opportunity by honing the resources needed to ensure that our region is the best place in the state to start and grow a business. We've enhanced our capacity in this by establishing the Kern County's first ever economic development division led by our first ever chief economic development officer, Jim Damien. Yay, Jim. This, is, this investment is already paying dividends. We love dividends. <laughs> this year, Kern County will take part in Stanford University's Economic Impact Fellowship Program, which will equip us with the proper methods and resources to accelerate the creation of Kern County's first economic development scorecard. This public-facing tool will track new business starts, job creation metrics, tax revenues, unemployment rates, and other economic key performance indicators. 2024 is truly the year Kern County completely overhauls and improves how we support our local business community. That's important. It is essential the board lead Kern County forward in this capacity, which is why we're in the process of launching a building permit modernization project to streamline real estate development processes through transparency and with certainty. This will include a new customer survey program, building permit process updates, technology enhancements, and the establishment of, an ex of acceptable timelines for all buy right permits. We're hopeful this, in yes. We're hopeful this investment will bring Kern County one step closer to being the best place in California to envision and complete real estate projects to the development community. We heard you, and we will not forget about you. In line with the development of our local economy this, 
this year, our region will celebrate a decades-long project coming to fruition as construction gets underway for the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino to home. This $600 million investment in our community will not only create 5,000 jobs, but will also be a catalyst in driving additional private sector development between Bakersfield and the Grapevine. Please join me, let's take a moment, join me and let's thank the Tahone Tribe for their esteemed partnership in realizing this economic windfall for our region. We also want to address an industry that has been bringing and is bringing recognition to Kern County for a long time, energy. Woo! Who said that? <laughs> this pivotal business sector creates a whopping $9 billion impact on our region and is one of the largest contributors to Kern County's tax base, supporting everything from libraries to roads to schools. But make no mistake about it, Sacramento is attempting to forcibly and recklessly, in my opinion, eliminate oil and gas extraction in California, which would dramatically change our economy for the worse. They also believe that paying more taxes, we could miraculously change the temperature of the earth. <laughs> Due to those accumulated state regulations, jobs are being eliminated, investments pushed out of state, and related local tax revenues are shrinking. This is a hard truth, but we can assure you Kern County is not doomed. In fact, we are resilient. As the energy landscape changes due to these unprecedented state regulations, we're successfully reinventing ourselves to maintain our position as a national energy leader while continuing to fight for our legacy oil and gas partners. To the oil and gas industry, don't worry, we are not going to forget about you either. <clears throat> right now, we are continuing to use our business sense, there's a lot of it in this room, and our proven record of success to meet the needs of both our residents and those that rely on the energy we produce. Kern County's green wind and solar electrons, along with our extensive lithium battery storage, touch every city and every county in California. This accomplishment sets our region up perfectly to innovate and recalibrate to be the center of excellence for carbon management by 2040 as we navigate the state's energy evolution that is happening before our very eyes. As a reminder, Kern County is one of only 24 communities nationwide to be awarded a U.S. Department of Energy LEAP Technical Assistance Grant. This funding has helped us develop an online version for a carbon management business park co-located with carbon capture and sequestration projects that will make Kern County a national center of excellence in new clean energy industries. Thank you. And we presented this vision publicly to provide inspiration to the private sector and an online education on possible new clean energy projects that could be uh, cited together to protect our communities while storing CO2 and providing for jobs and tax revenues. This potential look, the potential locations for this 30 million, think about this, 30 million square feet, square foot park on 4,000 to 6,000 acres combined with over 30,000 acres of solar for power is uniquely situated next to our extensive oil fields that are processing permits for carbon capture and storage. An expanded vision for our economy and private sector innovation will work together to create a new clean energy and carbon management hub for all of California. And with this, it's, with its proximity to rail and interstate highways, the possibilities for connection to the ports of Los Angeles and Stockton will expand Kern County's economic future and create new pathways for jobs and training to lift all people in all communities. Well, this, yes, thank you. While this accomplishment deserves to be celebrated in the highest regard, Kern County is certainly no stranger to defining and accelerating energy development. We discovered oil in the Kern River field in, anybody know when? 1899. Created the first wind energy in California in 1981. 
and the largest commercial solar project in the United States in Eastern Kern in 2011. It's important to remember our roots because we cannot accomplish an energy revolution without honoring and continuing to uh, the development of our oil and gas partners and utilizing their expertise to move our energy industry forward. Finally, none of this would be possible without prioritizing responsible and streamlined permitting and long-term planning as we consider billions of dollars in new energy investment and logistic projects that will lead this diversification effort through the coming years. We're proud to say because of our ingenuity of all our esteemed energy innovators and of course, our talented Kern County Planning and Natural Resources Department Director, Lorelei Oviat. Where are you, Lorelei? Our, our energy industry is really at the top of its game. Now tonight, it has been my great pleasure to share a few examples about how Kern County is investing today for a stronger tomorrow. I want to end tonight with a couple of thank yous, and I want to end on a little more personal note. I want to say thank you to, big thank you, and I'd like you guys to really, really help me thank them in a big way. Sophia and Christina from the Current Economic Development Corporation. Tonight's the largest crowd we've ever had for this event. This is a fundraiser for KEDC, and those two girls did a great, great job. Thank you to them. And the two real stars of this show are Allie and Anna Marie. These two from Kern County. She's waving over there. You guys did an amazing job, a really great event, and all the attention to detail, I just, I just really appreciate. I walked up to the song tonight, Don't You Forget About Me, but really it's all of you that I haven't forgotten about. As a Kern County Supervisor, we only get the opportunity to be the chairman of the board every five years and give this address every five years. So we have to realize that every time we do it, it could be our last. That's just the nature of this job. So I don't want to let tonight pass without thanking all of you who haven't forgotten about me through my 25 years in public office. <clears throat> I had absolutely no idea I was going to, I never had envisioned being in public office and to say, to be able to say that, that I've done this for 25 years is, is sort of astounding to me. There are too many of you to list and to name but uh, you've given of your time, you've been generous, you've uh, lended me your expertise, you've kept me humble when I needed it, um, and I just want to let you know from the bottom of my heart that I am so grateful uh, for all that you have done for me over these 25 years. And it's really funny because thank you is such an inadequate way to express the gratitude that I feel, but in the English language, it's pretty much all that we've got. So thank you, thank you so, so much for all that you've done for me. Thank you for your generosity, and most importantly, I want to thank you for never forgetting about me. I promise you, I will never forget about you. so much for being here to tonight for tonight's 26th annual State of the County. We hope you have a great evening, get home safely, and this concludes our program.